Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock, and I am an artist and paper crafter. And I am sharing some research that I've been doing for, oh gosh, six or eight months now. I took up watercolors and realized that I was better at them than I thought I would be. So a lot of people have been asking me, what are the good paints? What are the good brushes? What are the good papers? This video is all about the papers and the paints. I'm going to do some testing. I'll show you a bunch of different kinds of watercolors. I haven't tested out everything there is. And I'm limiting this test in particular to only pan or cake, sometimes they're called either one, pan or cake type watercolors, not the tubes because that just adds a whole nother factor in it. And I want to do some apples to apples testing. And I'm not testing every brand there is because I can't afford that, but I'm going to test some high and low ends and some in the middle so we can kind of get an idea of what makes a good paint. So these are some of the paints that I bought for this test and the the two I just pointed to there are ones I've gotten through paper crafting and the ones on the left I got through my art store. And I want to test out some very expensive ones from the art store as well as the more moderately priced ones that I got through paper crafting because this video is primarily for paper crafters but I wanted to at least show everybody what I've learned about this so far. So let's set aside the really pricey ones for the moment and I'll show you the other watercolors that I'm in the process of testing. And yes, I started with Crayolas as the lowest end. Yeah, I'm a little weird that way, but I wanted to see if it really makes a difference. I wanted to see if Crayolas can do really cool stuff. So the brush is terrible that's in here, but the paints are not as bad as I thought they would be. I, I have some testing that I do with them in this video, as well as a whole video at the end that I did with my little five-year-old buddy. She taught me how to paint with her Crayolas and my Crayolas, so stay tuned for that. But let's move on now. The Koi watercolor sketch box. This is a travel set and I took this with me to Europe and it was great. I absolutely loved traveling with this little set. Had a water brush that went in here, which I don't know where it is right now, but it traveled really, really well. It was, it fit into my bag really easily. You can see I've used it a lot. The pan watercolors do pit like that a little bit as you use them and that's normal. And it just closes up really well together and Bada boom, bada bing, perfect. Next is the Kuretake Gansai Tambis. And these I recommend really highly for paper crafters. They work really great. The colors are fabulous. They work great on, in general, on the papers and they're reasonably priced for all the colors you get. These little, little containers for each of the colors, they come out. So I've put a glue dot, or actually a power tab on the back of each one so they stay in place and they don't fall out because I knock things over all the time. So there's also a guide in the lid of this and I need to sit and color all my little swatches in there, but you color swatches so you know what colors all of these are going to come out to be. These Kiritakis come in 12, 24, and 36 sets. Okay, now these are little French watercolors. And I was like, ooh la la, French watercolors, they're gonna be awesome. And I was a little surprised. This brush is like the miniest little brush I think I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if I was supposed to have a handle to go with it, but it didn't come with a little handle. And they paint okay, but there's not a whole lot of choice in colors and stuff with them. So they're gonna be gifted to a young person. Now this is my favorite case out of all of them. Oh my gosh, this Winsor Newton is the most genius little case I've ever seen. If everything in my life came in a little perfect case like this, I would just buy the heck out of all of it. So this one has a lid. The lid comes off and you put your water in that. And then you open the sucker up and inside you have everything you need to paint with. You have a travel brush and that just turns around and pops right in there. It's a very good little brush. Love it. And then you have your water jar so you can take your water in it and pour that in. The Koi sketch box did not have a little water jar so I had to carry my own little separate water jar so this is very cool. It has a little sponge and then it has your palettes that fold out and your little watercolors. They're wrapped up right now. The yellow one is undone already so that we can test it out and see, but I wanted you to see how they come. Uh, they're a little pain to get them in and out and stuff and they do fall out until they get wet. Once they get wet, everything stays in place just fine, but they fit perfectly in the little cases and they're marvelous. They're really nice and I just adore adore this set. Did I say I really like this set a lot just because of the way it all goes together? 
maybe it's just something weird in me, but I love the packaging thing. And in order to get the brush back in there and make sure I don't get any hairs, I just gave it a really quick light lick. I know, and maybe I'm not supposed to do that, but I want to make sure I didn't wreck any of the bristles on the brush by jamming it in there and not having all the bristles go in appropriately. So look how cute that sucker is. Oh my gosh, amazing. Now this is the Holbein watercolors. This, we're talking real expensive uh, package here. Has a little place to squeeze there. Open it up and it's got two palettes. The palettes can snap on, but look inside this. It's got some really cool features in this set. It's got a really great number eight brush. This is a very, very nice brush. Goodness gracious, really awesome. Paints really well, holds a lot of water, really super. And again, gotta lick that sucker, get that in there, right? Because I don't want to mess this up. Then the paints themselves, the, the bottom of it is metal. And then each one of the paints has a, you know, when you unwrap it, um, has the paint in it that doesn't fall out. And then it has these little magnets and the magnets hold it in place. So you can slide them around and keep them away from each other so you don't drip paint from one side into, uh, from one paint into another or you can just fit more colors in there. So I think I might have to get more colors because I like this set quite a bit. But you can snap the little little palettes onto the edges, either on the sides or on the ends, whichever way suits you as you're doing your painting. And it's intended to be a travel set, again. I got the travel sets because I didn't want to invest in a giant set of them for my studio. And uh, really, really liked it. A little bonus tip for you that doesn't have anything to do with paint or anything. It's uh, I always keep a jar of super clean water on hand. I don't put any dirty brushes in that. And then I have three waters on hand and I use this little container because I like to have one for warms, one for cools, and one for, uh, for neutrals or something so that I don't have to change my water as often. And this little container, which is really great, nests all these little parts come together so if you have space issues this is a great way to have more room in your studio or craft room and still be able to have a couple jars of water when you need them i'm going to be using this brush from the silver brush company it's a three quarter inch oval wash brush so let us begin the testing i'm going to test a bunch of different papers here in this video and there's more of them on my blog with still photos and all the links to the products as well as the descriptions of them and what kind of paper they are, etc., etc. All the information I could possibly cram into a blog post. It's a monstrous thing. <laughs> I am going to test them all in the same way. I'm gonna try as much as I can to make this apples to apples. And I'm wetting the entire piece of paper first. And I'm doing them on the pad. I'm not taping them down on a board or anything because I wanna test for also to see how many of them curl like mad, if, if anything does. And doing this will allow me to kind of check accurately for that. Um, I'm going to use four different paints and I had to pick, I couldn't use them all. So I'm going to start here with the most expensive. This is the Holbein's and they will always be in the upper right hand corner. And on my blog, I'm going to have them all labeled. Couldn't label them all here in the video, but you're going to be able to sit here and watch as I do this, all of the paints and how they go onto the paper. I'm doing this in real time so you can watch how they actually flow. This is the Windsor Newton set with the really swanky little case, which I adore. Did I say? I think I said that I adore it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Kiritake, the Gansai Tambi, I hope I'm saying that right, watercolors that I've loved for so long and I use on a lot of my cards. That set is just a really convenient set. It's just, it's always there. They've got really big pans, I really like that. And this one is the Crayolas. Yeah, I know, I, testing the Crayolas next to the Holbeins is kind of an amazing thing. I'm sure the Crayola paints are probably freaking out at being used for a test like this. These, these paints have probably never seen such good paper. <laughs> so next, I'm gonna do a second color on each one of these as well. I'm gonna use a blue just because I want to see how they naturally mix. And you can see these Holbeins, they just do this blooming thing, which is really amazing. It's very cool. The other paints don't do that. I even tried giving the opportunity to the Winsor Newtons to do that bloom and it didn't do it. Now, you may not want that bloom to happen, so it might not be a good thing, but I love it. I think it's really cool. And 
so there's different reasons to use different paints and I may find that there are some techniques I'll only use certain paints for and switch to other paints when I want to use other things, other techniques. But this was an interesting thing and I'm going to actually keep all these sheets in the, uh, in the pads of paper so that I'll have them as a reference point anytime I need it. Or I may even put a book together or something somehow so I, I can keep these sheets as references and know what they do with the different paints on them. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to let everything air dry naturally. Next I'm going to use the Montval paper from Canson. Lots of these are Canson papers and uh, this one is on a block and a block is where there's like this gum glue thing around the outside I guess. I'm not sure what it's made of but it holds the paper down so you don't have to do any taping down onto a board or anything and I'm not taping anything onto a board because I don't I want to see if things curl. I want to see if anything like wrinkles like mad. So I'm just painting them straight on the paper, whatever, however it comes in the pad. So this one will end up being very flat and actually I'll, I'll give away the ending because the only one that actually curled significantly was the Canson XL. That's the first one that I showed. It's a student grade paper. It's really inexpensive and it's fine for paper crafters. It's just going to curl more than the others. It didn't curl in a way that was so bad that it was unusable. It just curled and the others basically didn't. But on my blog post, I'm gonna have pictures of all of the finished ones, these finished paintings, so you can see how they dried. And you'll be able to also see the side profile so you can see how much each one crinkled. Some of them crinkled a little bit, but not very much. And then the, the XL did a number, a number of crinkles. Now that corner, I, I just love watching how the whole binds started moving on the paper on almost all of these had me the most fascinated now this is arches arches is known as expensive paper but this pad is actually not all that bad given what it is and it's a rough paper rough means it's cold pressed but it's like really rough it has a lot of texture in it and i decided to switch it out so i put the water on and then i started with the windsor newtons instead because i thought maybe i'm being unfair by letting the whole binds have first dibs on the water and there is a little more spreading of all of these on the rough paper because that's what the rough paper does. It kind of makes the watercolor move more, but it doesn't seem to have made a difference between the Winsor Newton and the Holbein as far as which one is, is doing more of that. So I'm not sure that the order actually hurt the, uh, the test by making it unfair that we always had the Holbein going first. So there is another one down, and here is the Moulin du Roy. There's a series of them, and in this whole test, there's a couple of the different ones. This one is the hot press one. Hot press paper is smooth, and that means it's going to stamp really well, and stamping really well is something that's important to us. The other papers are textured, and this one has very little texture to it, but the watercolor still does seem to move on it, even though it doesn't have that rough cold press texture. So it's one of those things that I found interesting too, because I wasn't really thinking of this paper as something I would ever do backgrounds on. But after this test, I might consider that after all. So I'm gonna start putting my second color in them and let them uh, do their whole blendy blendy thing, such as they do. And we're getting some interesting, you know, really watercolor pooling going on around the edges, which can make for some really interesting techniques. As we get going, I'm going to be testing out lots more of these papers in the future and doing more tests here on YouTube. So feel free to subscribe to get more of that nonsense from me. Now here is the Fluid 100. This is another cold press paper. Again, it's a block. It comes in 9 by 12. Different ones of these come in 12 sheets, 15 sheets, 20 sheets. And you want to be careful when you're looking at prices to make sure you see how many sheets each one comes with because the per sheet price changes based on that. I'm not going to be putting any prices on my blog or on this video to let you know exactly which one. They generally go in order from less expensive to more expensive, but prices can fluctuate and I don't want to put something that won't be timely for somebody watching this in years to come. As we near the end of this video, I want to invite you to my blog. There are four more papers 
that are tested on my blog that are not here and there's total write-ups on all the papers and paints and everything and the brushes and the blah 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 so click in the upper right hand corner to get to that if you want just a quick rundown though the paints I would recommend would be the Kiritake against Saitambis they're my, my first choice the pans are really big so you can fit a big fat brush in there and their colors are nice they paint really well etc so those are great. The Koi are great for those who have limited space, especially, but they also paint really nicely. And as for papers, if you really just want to get the Canson XL, it's really cheap. It's student grade paper. It's inexpensive. But I want to put this thought in your head that came into mine, which is I buy a lot of stamp sets and I'll spend 16, 18, 20 dollars on a stamp set that I love. And I might use it three or four times, maybe five and then I get bored with it and I move on to something else. If I buy a pad of paper that's maybe the same price, 16, 18, 20 dollars, I'm gonna get, if there's 12 sheets in it, I'm gonna get 48 cards out of that same investment of money. So if you wanna think about it that way, it makes a little more sense to invest more in your paper if you really wanna have fun watercolor. Because what I found throughout this test is that the nicer papers make you happier when you're painting <laughs> because the paint does fun things that they does, it doesn't do on the cheaper student grade papers. So I just put that out there. If you want to justify spending a little bit of money, that's one way to think about it and put it into perspective. And I just want to show you, see, look, this is what you get when you get good paints and good papers. That just makes me smile. All right, enough lecture from me. There are two more videos here. One is on brushes and all that I know so far about brushes and the other is a few painting techniques, just some basic painting techniques for watercolor. You're welcome to go watch either one of those and I will see you again very soon. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and then you'll be getting the next videos that I do and who knows, there might be some more watercoloring coming up at some point. All right, have a really fantastic day and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya, bye-bye. Take them both. Take mm -hmm. them both. Right, put them both in the water at the same time. Yeah. I like your cup that has the hole in it. That is a really cool invention. You should patent that. And then just put one in the paint at a time. Every okay, so we get two to. different colors on both ones? Uh, just do one color on both one. Oh, same color on both? Yeah. Okay.